All right, so the next thing, um, we're looking specifically at uh, three particular things. So acts of conflict, acts of love, and acts of violence. And just sort of comparing the number of each and the types of each. So firstly, Annie Rayson's inheritance. Uh, acts of conflict, we have constant bickering over the inheritance between the family members. Um, and so obviously, in terms of conflict, I've separated out the actual acts of violence and just sort of bickering and arguments. Uh, again, inheritance. Acts of love, uh, when Felix comforts Lyle's daughter, is sort of the only real example that comes to mind. Uh, it's clear that the family loves each other, but their way of showing it is very sort of crude, violent, and not particularly warm. In terms of acts of violence, when Lyle whips Felix, um, and then when Nugget hits Lyle with a shovel, those are the two obvious, quite stark and surprising ones. I guess you could also add when Lyle hangs himself, commits suicide, as suicide is definitely an act of violence. Alright, so beneath clouds, acts of conflict, you're thinking when Lena is almost kidnapped by the two men in the car, when Vaughn spits in the policeman's face, and obviously that also leads into the act of, acts of violence when they attack the policeman. So the second thing, acts of love, Vaughn and Lena, they have a rather platonic hug at the end of the film and that's about as close as you get to love in the whole film really no one talks about loving their family or their mother or their brother or really anything that's basically as close as we can get to an act of love and even still it's not not exactly the most romantic thing so Acts of violence, when Vaughn attacks the police officers, uh, when Vaughn hits one of Lena's potential abductors in the face with a rock. Uh, so when the two men try to grab her into their car, he grabs a rock, knocks the man out, and they sort of run off. And then, of course, the story of when the Aboriginals were pushed off the mountain, which is Vaughn's story to Lena about, you know, what people don't give a shit about anymore, which is the acts of violence in the past perpetrated against Aboriginal Alright, so we're just going to talk about the key events of the plot. Um, I could have used many different structures to lay out the plot. So there's you know, a 3 point, a 5 point, a 12 point, the hero's journey. There are different ways I could have set out the plot, but I kept it pretty simple. So orientation, complication, and resolution. In essence, beginning, middle, end. But beginning is the setup, complication is the problem, and resolution is how the problem is solved or what happens as a result of the problem. So for inheritance, starting on the left hand side, uh, the orientation is the family, the two families I guess, but the families converge on the farm at Allendale to celebrate Dibs and Gurley's 80th birthdays. The complication is when Farley dies, the inheritance becomes a, a thing that matters. Uh, Dib tears up the will, or the inheritance I guess, um, and then the inheritance is in dispute and the discussion becomes whether Nugget will get it or who other what other people could do it. And then finally the resolution is when Lyle commits suicide. Uh, in the piece after the play we find out that the farm has been sold and that Maureen has become a local member, which doesn't necessarily clear up the complication, but it just tell us, tells us the very basic things of what happened. We don't really know what happened to Nugget or what happened to the rest of the family, but we know the farm was sold. Uh, we don't really know how that decision was reached. So, beneath clouds, uh, the orientation is that Vaughan is visited in prison, well, not exactly prison, probably a low, low level security type prison deal, but Vaughan is informed of his mother's illness in prison and then he escapes in the milk truck. The complication is when he meets Lena and they both realise they're heading towards Sydney and they begin to walk there, seeking a home. And obviously along the way they learn a lot about each other, but the complication the thing that drives them together is the fact that they're both going to Sydney. Then the resolution is when Lena and Vaughn are confronted by the police. Uh, they attack the police and escape. Vaughn flees with Lena to the home, his home, where he discovers what appears to suggest that his mother has passed away, or at least been taken away from home to a hospital. Uh, and then Vaughn and Lena go to the station where they part ways and that is the unsatisfying ending of the film. So language use, 
we'll keep this pretty short and simple, but in inheritance, there's a lot of slang, a lot of Australian ockerism, a lot of boganisms, I guess you could say. Uh, heavy homophobic remarks, a lot of uh, pufta and those sort of words. Uh, there's a great deal of swearing, there's a lot of racial slurs, and again, it's very colloqui colloquial, very jokey, very Australian, very broad. Whereas beneath clouds, by comparison, uh, racist terms are used quite sparsely, so not as often, but when they are used, they're used with great force and great impact, almost a physical blow at times. Uh, there is a lot of swearing, but it's very uh, sort of low level and it's not directed to people. The characters just swear as a part of their vocabulary. And also the two are relatively uneducated, so their language is not the beautiful uh, flowing uh, sort of creation of Hanny Rayson, but rather what could even be unscripted dialogue between the two non-trained actors who play Vaughan and Lee.